If you've been photographing weddings for any length of time, you've almost certainly encountered him. Sometimes he's an asset, but he's most stereotypically an annoyance. He's that guest who cosplays as a wedding photographer. Let's talk about him. Who is Uncle Bob? In wedding industry lore, he's the uncle of the bride who has better gear than you and knows more about photography than you. He's a distraction to male photographers and a condescending presence to female photographers. He has more megapixels than self-awareness. This is Uncle Bob. And yet, despite his well-earned reputation, he can occasionally be an asset. If I'm photographing a wedding solo and we're doing family portraits outside, I may need a human sandbag to steady my light stand. Uncle Bob is typically thrilled to assist the real photographer. He'll then tell people throughout the night about it and become your buddy, if not your inadvertent student, as he asks how off-camera lighting works and continues to wonder just how many pictures you're taking throughout the day. Either way, he is really, really excited about photography, or at least cameras. Sometimes he has more current gear than you do, which he's not shy about bringing up. I wish I could say his enthusiasm is infectious, but when you have an Uncle Bob who isn't the jolly version, he's the utterly non-self-aware version. Oh, you shoot Canon? Well, I have a Sony. Let us all roll our eyes in unison. Would you like to hear an Uncle Bob story for the ages? Buckle up! This wedding was a handful of years ago, and during my final meeting with the couple, the bride mentioned that her father's best friend would be recording the ceremony on his phone and wanted to know if that was okay with me. I'm not someone who feels they can tell guests what they can or can't do at a wedding, as long as it doesn't interfere with what I need to do. I've seen this show before, so I assured them it was fine. When I see a guest is going to film the ceremony, I usually suggest they sit in the front row rather than put their phone or camera on a tripod in the aisle or otherwise block an area where I might want to be. That way they're closer to the action and can fill the frame with the people, and being closer to who is speaking, there's a better chance of the phone or camera picking up the audio. And they're out of my way, so it's a win-win. Things went a bit off the rails during this wedding, though. I was in the bridal suite photographing the bride getting ready when Uncle Bob knocked on the door. The bride said, hello, Uncle Bob, and we were introduced. He said he wanted to film a little bit of the bride getting ready and asked if that was okay. Again, it's not like I can really say no, so I deferred to the bride. She was obviously reluctant, but also agreed, and he was mostly fine. He was there for maybe five minutes and went on his way. The bride apologized and said he wasn't supposed to be filming anything other than the ceremony. I said it was fine and took it in stride. As prep was winding down, I made my way to the outdoor ceremony site to take my light readings and get into position for the processional. I saw Uncle Bob walking around with his phone in an actual little cage made for, I guess, professional phone cinematography? This is probably actually a thing that I'm just unaware of. It had attachments for tiny video lights and a microphone, so this little rig turned his inconspicuous-ish phone into a not-so-little and obvious contraption. I gave him my little spiel about where to stand so he could get the best sound and video, and he let me know he was a retired wedding videographer himself. You don't say, I said, feigning excited surprise. He explained that because this was his best friend's daughter, he decided to come out of retirement for one more gig. I assume like a retired Liam Neeson finding a reason to use his very special skills again. The ceremony began and Uncle Bob stayed on the sidelines at first, and as the ceremony progressed, he stealthily made his way forward, standing in the front row exactly where he would best block the view of the groom's parents. I was in the center aisle between the front rows and squaring up my shot, and he was in my peripheral vision, so close I could practically reach out and touch him. His backside was literally in the groom's mom's face. He was completely unself-aware. When the couple went in for the first kiss, Uncle Bob decided to become Michael Bay or something and proceeded with a tracking shot by walking right in front of me. This was not the first or only time I questioned his claim of being a former professional videographer. No professional would walk in front of another hired pro. Well, usually. Because he was in fact not Michael Bay, his timing was off, and he passed in front of me just before the kiss actually happened. As he walked in front of me from my right to my left, I one-handed the camera as the kiss happened, reaching out with my left hand, placing it firmly on his shoulder, and gently but assertively pulled him out of my frame and next to me. Later in the evening, more than one guest approached me to tell me how well I handled that moment, and that they couldn't believe how intrusive he was being. One guest suggested my reaction should have been more physical than I'm typically accustomed to being, so I told him I'd take it under advisement. Once the ceremony was over and Uncle Bob's task of filming it was done, I thought it would be smooth sailing for the rest of the evening. But no! During family portraits, he stood so close he actually pushed me with his shoulder so he could square up better with the group I had posed and was photographing. I typically don't mind if someone else photographs or films my setups. As long as everyone looks at me and not at the other people, and I get what I need and can be efficient with my time, it's all good. After he physically nudged me, though, the bride spoke up and told him to let the person they hired do his job. I looked him in the eye and said, what do you think? And off he went elsewhere. When it came time for the entrances and first dance, the bride and I had been under the impression that Uncle Bob was done, especially after she asked him to stop during formals. Based on his behavior already, was I expecting him to continue into the reception? Yeah, I kind of was. 
he was not disappointed. Because this was a solo wedding for me, I didn't have to worry about having a second in the background. But when you know it, there was Uncle Bob, in the days before generative Phil, staking his claim to a spot that made him obvious in the framing I was trying to create with both the couple dancing and the environment of the tent and guests around them. Then he held his phone rig out in front of him and walked out onto the dance floor to get a close-up of the couple dancing. So yes, there were now three people out there during the first dance, only two of which whose names were on the invitations. With the first dance over, I walked up to him and said, dude, you were totally in my shot the whole time. Being the unself-aware protagonist of the story he's proven himself to be, his reply was, no, I wasn't. With the parent dances still to do later on, I asked him to at least stay at the edge of the dance floor. He didn't seem happy about being instructed, but nodded in agreement. The DJ was right there and heard the whole exchange and had seen everything he had done up until this point, so he just shook his head at the whole spectacle. With the toasts coming up, Uncle Bob decided to also share his intrusive gifts with the DJ. He asked if he could unplug one of the speakers so he could plug a recorder into his soundboard to record the toasts. The DJ, who's a friend of mine and who, like me, still tells this story, incredulously asked him, so you want me to unplug the speaker that allows everyone to hear the toasts so you can record them into your phone? I guess when he put it that way, Uncle Bob just walked away. Later, he also asked the DJ to make an announcement about where guests could view his video once the wedding was done. Uh, the DJ declined to interrupt the entertainment for his commercial announcement. Then, during dinner, he walked around interviewing guests with a handheld microphone like it was still the 90s or something. The bride was visibly upset by this whole display. Uh, this isn't what she wanted, and she kept apologizing to me. I told her it wasn't her fault, and I'm a professional, and I take these things in stride, etc. My job in that moment is to bring down the stress level. Having her dad's friend front and center, standing in front of guests and interfering with what they hired me to do were clearly not on her wedding day bingo card. At the end of the night, he said, good working with you, like you say to other vendors who were actually hired to work that day. I know photographers who would have lost their cool and blown up at this guy, but that's not the vibe I want to project. Even when things go wrong and you're screaming internally, you have to project professionalism. Yes, you can explain to somebody by what they're doing is messing with you, and more to the point, messing with what the couple hired you to do. They usually back off because they simply weren't aware. Then he run into jokers like this guy who made his friend's daughter's wedding all about him. But hey, now that DJ and I have a story to tell. Thank you for watching. If you like what you saw in this video, please like and subscribe. Those likes really do help with the YouTube algorithm. Do you have an Uncle Bob story of your own? If so, feel free to leave it in the comments below. If you'd like to see more videos like this one, check out this other video with more wedding photography stories. This is Ask a Wedding Photographer. I'm Seth Kay, and I'm here to help.